everybody. Thank you for coming to Transcultural Teaching. This um, presentation is basically teaching about relating patient care together with cultural competency in nursing care for patients. And the main reason for this, talk is, is for this um, presentation is cultural competency teaching with a focus on Filipino and Asian American Indo culture. Presentation is done by I'm Mama and I'm a student at uh, the University of Michigan Flint in the DMP program uh, for family nurse practitioner. And I am Olaini Sadi. I'm also in the DMP program at the University of Michigan Flint for the acute care nurse practitioner. Okay, so we'll start with just an overview of the presentation um, of the objectives. Um, the first one here is just to educate on some of the um, concepts that we have learned. We're taking a course in transcultural nursing care. Uh, we just want to share what we've learned up to date and also to describe the process of transcultural nursing assessment and how it's utilized um, now in nursing care. And also, we will talk about how you can apply it to clinical practice, and uh, we will share findings on some culture care modes of the Hindu and Filipino cultures. We did, um, in, in, in our class, we took, um, as part of our learning, we learned how to do a, a self-assessment and also how to assess other cultures. Um, so Yemi focused on um, uh, Filipino culture, she interviewed a nurse who uh, is Filipino and about her experiences here in the United States, and I interviewed an Indian family, and we talked a lot about um, the Hindu culture with regards to nursing care, so we'll share a little bit of that information um, somewhere down the presentation. And also to add more to what Titi um, talked about about the self-assessment, the main reason why we had to do the self-assessment was to be in tune with our own self, culture-wise, to know what our uh, prejudices, our biases, our stereotypes, to see if we have any common um, relation with any other culture and be able to relate it to the patients or to the other fellow workers that are from a different culture from us. So it's just in preparation for us to be able to deal with people in general. So that's why we had to do that. And also, um, the next slide is talking about the historical development of um, transcultural nursing. Transcultural nursing was developed by Dr. Um, Magdalene um, Lalinga in 1950. She was a lady that is so passionate about the care, and she found out that while she was caring for uh, people, that people were being generally cared for in the same manner. She later on found out that culture does play a very significant role in caring for people. The people sometimes want to keep whatever they are doing at home when they come into the hospital setting or whatever setting, inpatient, outpatient, for care. And she found out that I think she gets more results while she incorporates culture and care together while caring for um, the children she was caring for. The first history started off in 1950 when she was um, Appalachia, when she was um, with some the little children in the psychiatry, um, she found out that all the children were being summed up in the same room, they were being given the same food, and no results was being gotten from. And then the second culture, the, the second um, finding of um, Dr. Lalinga came in 1960, she, when she was doing a doctoral um, um, degree, she traveled all the way to Papua New Guinea, and she met, she lived among the people in Papua New Guinea, learned their culture, learned their language, learned the things that made them who they are, and she found out that culture does play a very significant role in the way people you know, relate to each other. And this is some of the historical development of transcultural. The field started in 1960, that's when the field of transcultural nursing began, 1970. The society, they established the Society of Transcultural Nursing. 1978, the first edition, she developed the first publication for the um, Transcultural Nursing. Then she also had um, another edition of the publication for quality research done. In 1989, the publication of um, Culture Care Theory book, that was the first book about culture care that Dr. Lalinga 
um, had to fill up. And also in 1979, the first publication of the Journal of Transcultural Nursing came about. Dr. Lelinda was also the initiative behind all that. We can all scroll down to all the significant things. She had journal publication upon journal publication. She had several books. Um, she developed se several theories up to the, I think the first theory started off in um, earlier when she first started the book and all the way down to here. And also she had some, this book was, this is the book we're using now in our class. Dr. McFay and Dr. Lala. Um, and Alma, also Alma are uh, instructors for the class, and they also they, their book came about through the use of um, the theory based on what Dr. Lelinga developed during that time. Well, I also want to bring about that Dr. Lelinga passed away, I think, this year. She's a blessed memory now, so. And um, it's pretty cool. <laughs> so Dr. Uh, Dr. Leiningham actually taught Dr. McFarland. Yes. And Dr. McFarland taught Dr. So, Dr. Levi Alama, and this is our instructor. So they have been revising um, some of uh, the concept publishing books based on the teaching content that they have learned. So in just you can tell in just a short span of time, like from 1950 and we're now in 2015 and 65. Mm -hmm. I'm math is off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in like yeah, you know, for 50, 65 years. You know, the field has come from being non-existent to where it's being used by not just the nursing profession, I mean, the medical profession's using it, social work, the field yeah. of psychiatry, because everybody's incorporating, using, um, treating people, targeting treatment uh, modalities based on culture, because if you don't, you don't have compliance and you're just missing the ball there. Okay, so we're going to talk about some transcultural concepts. Um, you may have heard of some of these. Um, and the first one here is acculturation. So you have somebody who um, has their own culture, um, but takes on some elements of somebody else's culture. So for, and I'll just give my example. I, um, I am Zimbabwean and I am married to a Ghanaian. So I still retain a lot of my Zimbabwean culture, but I have also taken on some of my husband's cultures, the, the good things that I like about his culture. So <laughs> uh, so that what our culturation is. So you know, we just need to be um, cognizant of the fact that people do, uh, they, you can't label everybody into one box because you know you, you really have to do a cultural assessment to understand what their culture is, because it could be a mix of one, two, three, even five more cultures, you know. Um, and then the next one is enculturation, which is when you actually uh, take on a culture in its entirety to where you uh, actually, you just take the whole culture on. It's like, so much like changing cultures, you know, you're switching from one culture into taking all the elements of the next culture. And then with multiculturalism, this is just um, recognizing that you need to accept that other cultures are there, and you accept elements from other cultures, you recognize them and you respect them. That's just being multicultural. And then assimilation is um, when you are totally embedded into a culture to where you, you don't really recognize the indigenous culture of that person. And the next concept we'll discuss, um, stereotypes. I'm pretty sure we're all familiar with some of the ones that I hear because they're the ones that we tend to see the most. Um, as you can see, this is just uh, from the picture. You have um, a lady um, uh, representing the Muslim culture, and uh, let's say this is just our Western culture here. So you can see the two different perceptions of each other. Um, they are very different, but without really understanding or knowing, you can't really understand where people are coming from with what they're doing. Um, stereotypes are just narrow, fixed views or generalizations. You know, um, uh, you could use an example of all Muslims, um, all Muslims, like, 
that's not, the, that's not the best example I could use. Can you come all up with Arabs are Muslims. Yes, all Arabs are Muslims. And that is, um, that stereotype that, you, that you, every, every uh, Arabic person you see is Muslim. Some, some of them are Christian, some of them are Jewish. Yes, they practice different religions, so um, that's stereotyping. And then um, cultural blindness is um, engaging in cultural imposition without being aware that you are causing pain. So when you're not aware of somebody's culture and then you um, force your element of your culture on them, you are causing them pain. So you're imposing your culture on them because you are blind to what their culture um, is. And then um, ethnocentrism. So this is the belief that um, your culture is better than everybody else's culture. So you know you you try and force people to to think the way you do, to worship the way you do, to eat things you do and drink things you do without really um, being aware of of the differences there. And then uh, we also have culture shock. Um, that is when you um, encounter a different culture and you're just shocked by something that you've never seen before um, or experienced because it's not familiar to you. Can you think of any examples that you've experienced culture shock? Um, I'm trying to think of an example, but sure. Um, first time I went to Mexico, it, was, it seemed to be a culture shock. Um, it was, there was a lot of poverty, they get a lot of, you know, most people seem um, still very happy and, you know, going from San Diego down to Tijuana, it was like, wow, it was a big culture shock, I guess. Right, yeah. Seeing how they lived compared to just right over a mile away, how different it was. Right, yeah. I'll tell you my example, when I first came here in the United States, I didn't think there were homeless people. <laughs> you know, I so seeing a homeless person, like a, whole, a group of homeless people on the first time, I couldn't believe that a first world country with, you know, with so much wealth, because until you come here, you don't really realize um, how different the world view is of America. You yes. know, you, you have this perception, and then you come here, and then you're like, oh, there is also poverty. People actually get sick here. We don't see that on TV, and that's a lot, you know, major source of news for people back home. So then you come to experience it, and you know, you're like, oh, there are actually bad things that also happen here. So um, that was like my biggest culture shock when I first came. And then um, the last one here is um, discrimination. And discrimination is just participating in stereotyping and also in just judgmental behavior. Um, when you discriminate against people because of uh, their race or their color or their religion, um, when you don't take that into account, it, that is discrimination, just narrow judgments. And um, here we're going to talk about the development of cultural care theory, which is a theory that Dr. Lalinger um, developed on our own. The theory was independently developed based on our uh, experiences when she went to Appalachia and also when she was at um, in Papua New Guinea with the interaction that she had with the people that she had with. So the theory came about from there. Um, the theory is also nothing based. So the theory takes the, the, the theory does show that nothing is a very unique um, career which encompasses every aspect of the human. We take into consideration people's um, religion, their beliefs, their culture. We, um, we make sure that um, we don't discriminate in nursing. If you're in the nursing field, you put your biases and, and ethnocentrism aside and focus on the patient. We make sure that um, the patient is our own main um, focus. And nursing also takes this discipline knowledge. We're very professional in the way we interact with our um, patients and the family members. We take deeper, highly very important privacy. We take it as a number one role and advocacy. We also we always make sure we advocate. So all that theory was based basically on the experience that Dr. Lalinga had. That was how she came about this culture. <coughs> and we're talking about um, the theory being unique in case.